Hello and welcome to C Programming Zero to Neural Networks. Today we are discussing random numbers, which are actually very interesting and we'll certainly need them for uh, neural networks because when we make a neural network, we, um, we initialize the network with randomized parameters. So we're gonna need some kind of randomization function to be able to do that. So let's look at how, uh, uh, how we might use random numbers in the C programming language. In fact, let's first do a quick uh, exploration of random numbers. So um, let's come up with some random numbers. Uh, 55, 4, 2, 99, 7, 1.26, 43, 7, 1,001. That's enough. You get the idea. And where have those random numbers come from? Well, they've come from my brain, haven't they? They've come from my consciousness. And... They're probably not random numbers. They're probably, there's probably subconscious reasons and psychological reasons why I've chosen all those numbers and, and, and so forth. And that would be a lengthy conversation for another time, wouldn't it? The point is, ma ra random numbers are a little bit mysterious, aren't they? Um, but the, the, sort of the concept of them. So it, if we're going to use random numbers in programming, really we need to understand what they are in maths. So let's look at some maths. We can do y equals x squared and uh, if we feed in a value of x is 2 we get out a y of 4 don't we because x uh, 2 squared is 4 if we feed in a value of 3 we get 9 so what we want from uh, our mathematical random number is um, y equals rand x we need some kind of mathematical function that, uh, that um, takes a value of x and turns it into a random number and strangely enough that's impossible. That's not something that you can do. There's no mathematical function that produces randomness. It's, a, it's an interesting interesting maths problem, um, if you're interested in looking it up at some point. So how do, how do we make a random number on a computer program? We've got random number functions that we can implement. So how do we do it? The, the answer is we don't. We don't actually have random numbers in computers because as it happens, they don't really exist in the entire universe. They're just an imaginary thing. They're just a magical thing that we we kind of make up. Even though they seem like a really obvious concept. Oh yeah, random number, just a different number every time. They're, 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 they're the kind of thing, we live in a cause and effect universe where everything's due to a cause and effect. So randomness doesn't really exist, does it? Um, again, that would be another very long conversation for another time. Um, so what we do, what we have in computer programming, we have pseudo random numbers we have like random numbers so we have like a rand function and we see that random function with um we actually have s rand and then uh, we can put a number in there or we can put in something like the time into that seed rand and the time's an ever-changing value so as the time's constantly ticking along the rand function always outputs a different value um, and that's how we do it. It's not a random number. It's a pseudo random number. It's a good enough random number for most of our needs. So let's look out at look at how we program these sorts of things. So let's make a C file random.c. We're going to include the C standard input output library. We're going to make a main function and we're going to return a zero. And uh, we're going to need to include another library as well, aren't we? So we need the rand function. So that exists in the standard lib, std lib. And uh, that allows us to use rand, which is just written like that. So let's do int x equals rand and print it out and see what we get. X, stick it on a new line. And we get a really big long number. So you'd think with a function called rand, if we ran this again, we'd get a different really big long number. No, we get exactly the same number again. Why? Why do we keep getting the same number? Well, we haven't seeded the uh, the random number, have we? This this is um, there's no seed going into this, so we have to do that. S rand, and then we have to put some kind of seed in. So if we put like a number like ten, a fixed number, and run this program again, we get a different random number but is once again the same every time it's just a different random number so how do we make it so it's a varying random number and well, we need to put the time inside of here and we put the time zero or the time null now the time function isn't in stdio.h or standard lib it's got there's a separate time library called time.h surprisingly now finally when we run this function we're going to get a different number every time 
we have actually achieved randomness or pseudo randomness as we as we refer to it in programming terms now that number is a big number what if we want a random number between 1 and 10 well we can do that by putting a percent sign after the rand and then put in the number 10 well this will actually give us a random number between 0 and 9 5 8 4 5 1 and so on pseudo random numbers what if we want a random number that is between 10 and 20 well we've got a range of 10 so if we add 10 onto that that's going to achieve exactly that result it's going to give us a random number between 10 and 20. so these two numbers here are like um, an upper and a lower limit so this one's considered the the upper, the maximum value, and then we are adding on, so we're shifting that range up to it by 10. So this, this is equivalent to the lower. And we usually write a function to do this, so we do um, int rand int, and we make our own function, which returns rand, and we've got two parameters in it, upper int lower, and we do exactly what we've done here, percent, um, upper plus lower and we can get rid of this and we can do in x rand int now oh, forgot me here uh, I've got to put the range in as well upper 50 lower 40 That's no, not working. Oh, because I've missed it, missed out some bits. Upper minus lower plus lower. We have to do forty, forty, forty-six. So it should be a range of between forty and fifty. So we get a range by taking the upper and minusing off the lower. So that gives us the appropriate range and then we add on the lower to shift that range up so it's the minimum value is the lower. In fact, what we usually do with this kind of function is do a plus one on the upper because otherwise the upper limit, the number 50 here, will never be included. So to make it an inclusive upper, we, we, we do a plus one. So that's how we do it. That's how we do a random int within a certain range. We can do a random int between 120 with a lower limit of 110. So that should give us a, a random number between 110 and 120, 117, 119, 116. You'll notice if I run the same program in quick succession, it gives us the same number over and over again. It only changes every second. There are ways to make it so it changes quicker, but there are certain implications for doing that that probably aren't relevant to this video. Now, in um, neural networks, we're going to be dealing with floating point values. So we have floating point weights and floating point biases and those sorts of things. So what we need is to make a random floating point number. Well, we can't we can't do that with a rand int function. And this rand function itself returns integers. It deals in whole numbers. So how do we how do we make a, a random floating point number? What we want is a randomized number between zero and one, ideally. So let's change that to a present f, and we're going to have to have a different function. Aren't we? We're going to need a rand float function. So let's make that float, rand, float. And we need to return something, don't we? And if we return this rand, well, this is going to, this deals in whole numbers. So how, how do we make this into a float? Well, we can do something in C programming called casting, which is uh, an important part of C programming. And what we do is um, we, we put some brackets in front and then we put the type that we want to cast this thing to we want to cast this integer value to a floating point value and we can cast anything we can cast an int to a double we can uh, cast an int to a long int we can cast an int to a short int we can do we can cast any type to another type in this case we want to cast to a float so this rand without this modulus thing is just going to be a really big number isn't it, it might be a change number which is a really big number and what we want is a number between 0 and 1. So we need to divide whatever this number returns against the maximum possible number that it could return. 
And thankfully, we have that as a predefined constant in our standard lib, standard library. We have rand max, which predefined, uh, as I said, a predefined constant is an exacting value. So we divide the, the output of rand by the maximum possible value of rand, and we're going to end up with a value somewhere between 0 and 1. We also want to cast this to a float. We don't have to, as long as one of these is casted to a float, it's going to work. But for completion sake and just to make the code as accurate as possible, um, we're dividing a float by a float. So this should work. We should end up with a random floating point value now. Somewhere between 0 and 1. And this is exactly the kind of function we're going to need um, in our neural networks. Now you can, what if you want a, a random floating number between zero and 10 rather than between zero and one? Well, working with values between zero and one is really easy. We call them normalized values and um, it's easy to manipulate normalized values. So if we want to, we could have a float scale and we just times this by the scale. I'll stick another bracket there. So we can just times whatever the 0 to 1 value is by, say, 10, and we'll get a value of between 0 and 10. So let's try that out. From a 10 there. Sure enough, we get values between 0 and 10 every time. Nice and simple. So working with uh, normalized values is generally pretty good. In fact, a lot of the time we do... Um, compress data into a normalized range. Let's put that back to how it was. And that's about it for random numbers. So this is going to come in really handy for, um, you know, in terms of C programming, there are certain sort of functions that you tend to write yourself that uh, use a lot of programs. And these, these are two of those functions. So for random numbers, you want a, a randint function with an upper and a lower limit. And uh, you do upper plus one minus lower plus lower. Nice and simple. Oh, and the percent sign, obviously. And that'll give you a, a range of random numbers between the lower range and the upper range, obviously, nice and descriptive. Then we have a ran float. And if you need a ran float to that, that um, returns numbers between a certain range, we can just add a scale in there and multiply that result by the scale. What I tend to do is just have a, a typical rand float and then whatever function is dealing with that rand float, I would manipulate the data. I would manipulate the return value and scale it in the function. But it depends on the nature of the program and what, whatever it is you're implementing um, would determine which is the right function to go for. But I like this nice plain function here. So that about does it for random numbers. And um, yeah, we'll be using this guy a lot. This is um, a very useful function. And that covers random numbers. So um, as I said, we can't generate, to summarize, we can't generate real random numbers in C programming language or any programming language or in maths and there's no random numbers that, you know, it, you can certainly spend some time thinking about it. You don't find many random numbers in the universe. I haven't found any yet. Perhaps at, at, in subatomic level, quantum level, who knows? But um, in terms of the macro world, there's no random numbers. And in terms of maths, there's no random numbers. You can't generate random numbers. We work with pseudo random numbers and we have to seed our pseudo random numbers with a change in value. And the easiest change in value we can, we can seed it with is the time. And uh, the time in, in C language is obviously a Unix epoch. So it's the time in seconds passed since the 1st of January, 1970. And if you're not into your program, you might not know why that is, but it's the birth of Unix, obviously. So the time since the birth of Unix in seconds. <laughs> right, okay, that about does it for this video. I shall see you next time. Goodbye.